Hello and welcome to the third uh, video of this series. In this video, I am going to discuss research methodology with you. Okay. In discussing this, I am going to make some basic assumptions that you understand some things. So I wouldn't really go backwards and very very far. Right. Now, your research methodology. What you are supposed to do here is to tell us how you went about writing or doing your project. The idea is that in chapter 1, you introduced the topic. In chapter 2, you told us what is already known about the topic. Right? Then in chapter 3, we are expecting you to now tell us how you want to go about conducting your study. This is important because at the end of the day, by the time you are done with your research work and your research report writing, you will not be there to explain to everyone how you went about doing your project, okay, or writing your project. So, we want you to tell us for standardization purposes and also for reference purposes how you went about doing the research so that when we read we we'll understand where you are coming from and where you are going to so your chapter three begins with an introduction you tell us what the chapter is all about or what it is said to do then you also break it apart into some headings that you want to deal with right so for instance, in this literature, in this um, research methodology, we want to talk about survey research design. We want to talk about the research design, population of the study, sample and sampling technique, instrument of data collection, procedure for data collection, and then procedure for data analysis. Right? Now, for the research design, there are many research designs out there. Okay. What you should do is you can just simply type on Google research design. So you will be the one to choose the one you feel is in line with what you want to study or in line with the problem you are studying. So there are several research design, but here I am making use of what of survey research design. Okay, so here I said that survey design is used to collect information from different subjects within a given population having the same characteristics of interest. Then the survey helps to collect a wide range of data from a given population which includes their attitude, opinion, perception, behavior, awareness and then practice. Then this is the, um, the, the person I cited. Right? Then this is all about research design. You tell us what research design you want to use for your specific work. Right? Then the next part is the population of the study. Your study is usually done not in isolation or not in limbo or not in a vacuum. It is usually done in a place. Okay, maybe a school, a hospital, clinic, um, CBN, a library, a museum, whatever place, right? A lab, whatever place. So, the population of your study here, you tell us who you are actually studying. Okay? So, for instance, here I am about to study about 455 students that range from 2016 to 2021. Okay? Now, that will give that gave me a table. Depending on what you are doing, yours might not give you a table. Mind game, so but just feel free to go about this part. Then the next section is your sample and sampling technique. So the way project works is so you have your population of the study. Your population of the study may be so great, so big, so large, and spread apart that you cannot study all of them at once. Imagine you are an undergraduate student and you have the project topic that has a population of about. 2,000 or 40,000 people. Of course, you cannot do that project, right? So the idea of sample and sampling technique is 
you get a percentage depending on the author you adhere to or the scholar you adhere to you get a percentage that you feel you can comfortably study okay so to do this you have to cite a particular author as him or her being the person that informed your decision for instance in sample and sampling technique here i made use of um Yont. Another person might make use of Kreji and Moga, right? As a matter of fact, when I was writing this project, at first I made use of Kreji and Morgan. Kreji and Morgan gave me about 200 and I think 25 um, sample. Okay, that sample was so much, so much. So I felt I couldn't cope, so I looked for an alternative. So I found Yont. For Yon, Yon said that if you have a population of the study that's anything between um, 10, 0, 0 to 100, like this, 0 to 100, you can use a 100% of the population. That is, you can use every person. Then, if you have a population that is within 101 to 1000, right? then just take 10% of that population, 10% of that population. If you go back and check my population of the study, you find out that I have about 455 students, right? Now, if I take 10%, that 455 students fall within this range. So if I take 10% of the population, I will end up with about 45 or something percent. Right now, when I end up with 45 point something percent, since they are human beings, what I need to do is what is it a round up? Okay, so giving me 46 respondents. So that is how you go about getting your sample and sampling technique. And of course, you can also cite other people or look for other scholars that are more favorable to what you want to do. If your research population is about 2,000 people, the population, you can look for a scholar that simplifies everything for you. Then the next section is instrument of data collection. There are several instruments of data collection. For instance, you have questionnaire, you have um, focus group, you have interview, you have primary sources, different things, right? So. Here, you will tell us what you intend to use to, work, to collect your data. You can also cite sources as to why you want to use some instruments to get your data. So, so instruments to get your data. So, also in this instrument of data collection, you will tell us what each section of the questionnaire for your instrument of data collection is all about. So for instance, in section one, what I have is what is demographic, demographic data. In section two or section B, I also have another, um, I also have another target. Then section C, the same thing like that, like that, up to when you are done with your questionnaire okay now then the next point is your procedure for data collection how do you want to go about collecting your data now depending on what you are studying and when you are stu and where you are studying it you might need to write a letter to that institution okay if you need to do that you will generally write a letter to your head of department to that institution then the your head of department is now stamped on that letter and then give you to forward it to the institution by the time you do that the people at the institution will allow you to conduct your study there peacefully without any disturbance so in your procedure for data collection you can mention that then you can also mention how you intend to go about collecting your data are you going to collect your data alone or are you going to collect it with the help of a research assistant or 
any other way you want to go about collecting your data you let us know in this section then also procedure for data analysis in procedure for data analysis here you will tell us how you want to go about analyzing your data okay are you going to use the mean are you going to use frequency are you going to use standard deviation are you going to use variance are you going to use percentages tables whatever you want to use you tell us in this place if you are going to use a software also tell us in this place then in your chapter one some researches some research have hypothesis so those hypothesis testing or whatever you have you also if you can include it in this section so that is procedure for data analysis then of course you have your references so remember depending on your field department in your school each of these sections or each of these chapters might have references or they might not have references but at the end of the day whatever you are doing make sure that it is according to the guideline given to you okay 